Hey everybody, Mac and Damer here for OCR Kings. That's right, the original All Obstacles guys. Uh, we love getting these sit reps from Tom, and he's got a doozy for us. Thank you again, Tom, for sending us this. If you haven't done so already, to keep these conversations going, please like and subscribe. It definitely helps to support the channel and the effort. And uh, if you haven't checked out Tom yet already, definitely do so on Instagram. We'll be providing yes. links to his profile down in the description below, as well as an unabridged copy of this right. uh, sit rep will be available on our blog. Check out the links below. This, of course, is for Palmerton, that uh, the of super course. sprint and trail. Yes. Uh, this past, what, uh, the 13th and 14th of July, 2024. Right. Damer, you have deep domain experience with this locale. Yeah. Yes, I have done this venue before, and, and it's uh, pretty much everything that Tom describes, which we will get into momentarily, is absolutely true. And uh, as usual, uh, Tom went above and beyond in this hit rep because <laughs> I did. learned quite a few we things. We learned some stuff. Yeah. And as usual, and of course, some things I don't even know how to pronounce. So uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how this we'll see how this goes. Awesome. All right. So as an overview, you know, anyone who has run Spartan races on the East Coast, certainly you're familiar with Palmerton. I have heard it uh, described, at least the super uh, has been described as a mini beast in the yeah. past. I yeah. think that is probably still true and certainly sounds so from Tom's description. It's been at the same location for the past 10 years. For, forever, yes. Yeah, Blue yep. Mountain Ski Resort out That's there right. near Allentown, Pennsylvania. Is that a correct? Yeah, it's pretty close, Palmerton. All right, uh, many Spartans may be reluctant to travel to this location just for a super and a sprint, but hey, you know what? They've also added a 10K trail, which was the yeah, first sure. 10K trail that we're aware of that has sold out. So there was a lot of interest in that yeah, one cool. this year. It's pretty cool. That's cool. I don't know. This venue is challenging. So if no, if you haven't done it yet, it's like, yeah, you may want to uh may want to pop in and give this one a try. Yeah, it's like a bucket list one. It's yeah. Like I West think Virginia, so. Killington, Palmerton. Yeah. They, you know? Right. So, you know, Tom mentioned some logistics about flying out there, which we found kind of weird because it's driving distance for us for, for us that's... so yeah and and allentown isn't exactly a destination airport but obviously for anyone coming from far away that's definitely the nearest small airport to get into yeah and i guess the tsa lines are never long that's great car rental is a short walk from baggage claim so it's baked yeah. right in it seems pretty yeah. easy and uh you know definitely not a hassle as far as tom uh has experienced uh he does tell us about we have a picture on screen here of the the mountainous background over there with clouds looks pretty cool looks right cool. yeah but did you know damer that this <laughs> race is located in the poconos a region of old growth forested mountains peaks valleys and lakes in eastern pennsylvania that has a history dating back before the dinosaurs yes. did you know that yeah. that's right <laughs> oh yeah he he goes into quite the depth here so uh poconos actually derive from a native american word uh, both the tribe and the word i won't uh, attempt to pronounce <laughs> out of respect because they're long and foreign, and I don't know, but uh, the geographical Pocono region is a sub-range of the Allegheny Plateau, part of the Allegheny Mountain Chain, and the entire mountain range was created when Africa slammed into the ancient continent of Laurentia 270 million years ago, before the breakup of Pangaea. Wow, I had no yeah. idea. That's right. Okay, My so brain the brain hurts. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so the coarse gray sandstone rock dating yeah. from the late De Devonian make them over 300 million years old. So when you are running this course, kicking and stepping over these rocks, keep in mind that they were around before the dinosaurs. Right. See, now it's definitely a destination race. Absolutely. Okay. If you love Spartan race and or you love geology. This is definitely the venue for you. 
Amazing. So speaking of the venue, the Blue Mountain Ski Resort has hosted this event for the last 10 years, as we've mentioned yeah. before. Ample parking. Uh, we have yeah. a look, at, look at the picture right, little picture yeah. right here. Just right so here. And we've got some other pictures from uh, Tom. He's got some with some cars in the background. And Damer, you mentioned that over these hills. And there was more parking. By, there was yes, more parking. More I parking definitely was there. parked in some meadows way out to the right and had to walk in. So looks like it's filling up. I was like, don't see a lot of uh, racers in this picture, but. Nah, well, it was uh, maybe early on. Too All hot. over. They, uh, could be, they could be anywhere on that course. They could be on that starting death march that we'll get into. Absolutely. Uh, Tom does mention that there were over 10,000 folks at this uh, venue for the weekend. That includes racers, kids, spectators. And uh, trail participants running the trail race. We'll get back into that in a minute. Uh, he did mention that there were at least 20 vendors uh, at this locale, uh, which Damer, you found surprising. Because... Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good number. I mean, that's that sounds great. That sounds like Spartan's got some uh, relationships brewing and, and going. So good on them. He even mentions a, uh, a new one. One of the vendors uh, is called Shield Tape, which is... Just like KT tape, so that's that's cool. It's like Spartans expanding and uh, bringing on some new uh, small businesses to uh, help along and just make the whole community grow. So, so uh, good on Spartan and good on the venue and right on. Sounds cool. And uh, speaking of the location here, too, you mentions that the Blue Mountain has a summit elevation of fourteen. 100 feet we'll try not to uh snicker at that yeah. because we have hills that we run on that are bigger than those every weekend but um you know he does mention that uh before you start hysterically laughing at this point and thinking what's the big deal uh you yeah, know this is deceptive he it's says i understand grasshopper <laughs> <laughs> but the ski resort has over 40 trails, including several intermediate and expert. And I guess right from the get go, you're going up them. Correct. Yes. It's, it's, it's like base, base to feet. summit. Like, yeah. And you just have, go, have fun. Yep. And it's straight up. And it's, uh, it's quite the elevation gain over a short distance. So yeah, it's, it's a steep, right. Haven't even had a chance for your muscles to even fire yet. And you're already just climbing the elevation. Which is yeah, that that's why the the super is considered a, a mini beast. Yeah, because you know, you, you're, you're gonna you're gonna do that again. You're gonna go up and down and back up. At so least. in the, in this picture too, it's the it looks like monkey bars. It's definitely a rig. It's got the aluminum superstructure in there. Yep. It seems like aluminum looks things like people are dangling off of. He mentions that they were out there in the sun, and they were hot. Like, I like guess really, so, yeah, like, like almost burning to the like touch. Dangerously hot. Yeah, that's... interesting. We've never experienced that before. At least nope. I don't recall that ever happening. So yeah. that yeah. adds an interesting dynamic. So uh, that goes to, you know, some of the things that he was speaking about with the weather. And I think, Damer, you've experienced this before. Uh, you know, the courses in the mountains are infamous for variable weather. Yes. Yep. And, and for several years at this race, they've had thunderstorms at some point and it's delayed race heats. Now, did you experience something like that or the changeable I, weather aspect over I here? I didn't, but when I was there, it was, it was raining and it was foggy and it was just, just a, a, a pissing day. So everything was wet. Everything was slick. So certainly not what's pictured right here. So yeah, just like what Tom says, you never, you never know what you're going to get. Yep. He says, be prepared for unpredictable mountain weather. Right on. Yep. Okay. He does mention uh, he got caught in some rain and in true Tom fashion, never willing to quit or to be ejected from the course. He soldiered on. And uh, I think this was during the, was it during the trail? I think it was the 10K. The yeah. yeah, there was rain and he heard in the distance, the announcer, I guess, closing the, uh, the, the venue, the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, area at the bottom. And uh, by the time he had hauled ass and gotten there, he said there was nobody around. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right. So the course, the super and the sprint this year, they were both epic. Palmerton never disappoints to present the challenge. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, we and many of the folks that we've talked to like the 10K version, you know, since it allows for faster times over shorter distances. Very great. Palmerton agrees with you. Valued OCR King subscribers and throws in some vertical elevation and yes. technical running as a reward. Very cool. You know, again, that's why Palmerton yep. is, is one of the places that you have to get to. And, uh, you know, not a lot of obstacles in the first section. Other than the easy ones like over and under in the six foot wall, it's but her hoist was early on. Yeah, was was early in the first stage. Yep. Found that interesting. That's usually right at the end. Uh didn't seem like there was much mention of pipe layer. Oh darn. <laughs> Just make your, sure your favorite obstacle. Yes. Yeah, it's just it's just dumb. But Palmerton does have the signature obstacle ape hanger. Yeah. He said it was yep. back this year. That's cool. All right. You got to come out of the water, go up the rope, go across like a rope laddery type version of monkey bars. It, it yep. bounces. Yeah. And moves. So it's totally cool. Very cool. I mean, I love to. I mean, if it's only at, at Palmerton, it was, it was like, that's awesome. And just keep it going that way. Yep. But it was like, I would love to see it in in another venue or surprise pop up here right. and there. Dear Spartan, more ape hanger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. He talks about, uh, you know, the fire jump being at the end. Great. No big deal. And uh, they have to make uh, an effort. This is from Tom to figure out how to make the flames higher and to force you to actually jump. actually jump okay because yeah i usually just step over them at the yeah. end i don't want yep. the picture i don't care <laughs> thank you very much i don't That's find it. it to be much of an obstacle right. but if they force you to jump especially if you're doing all this vert and you're worried about leg cramps you know yeah. what i mean you go to push off and your can your calf seize as you're going up in the air that could make things interesting uh and dangerous, but certainly interesting. So, yeah, I agree That's with right. you, Tom. So, uh, Tom does mention that he opted out of doing the uh, sprint this year. Instead, he wanted to do the trail race. We have a picture of the corral right here on the screen. Uh, looks pretty full. Looks like the waves of old, yep. where it's uh, it's pretty solid there and a great picture it looks like you that's start a great out picture too right because that that just shows you what you're getting into just at the start of any of the races there you are at the bottom and you can see right there in that open spot in the top it's like that's the first opening intro to palmerton race so it's like yeah have fun see you at the top then you got to go that way and now you know that's 300 million years old. So <laughs> that's right. treat it with respect. Respect your elders. <laughs> All right. So sold out this wave. Uh, 450 runners. Very good. You know, the Damer, you mentioned too, if it was that popular, but maybe Spartan, you might want to think about having another wave. Yeah. I mean, if the trail runs are, are gaining traction, then that's great. Make some yeah. more. Make another one. With the, with the amount I keep injuring myself, I don't know. I may, be, I may become a pro at the trail run only. <laughs> <laughs> Says Tom, a, this is Palmerton, and a huge thunderstorm yeah. came in. And you could hear, as I, we mentioned before, the PA announcer shutting down the festival area as we got okay. significant rain, lightning, and thunder. But true to form, Tom decided to keep running. So by the time he got to the finish line, it was deserted. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably helps there's no volunteers on obstacles telling you closed go away right out there on the just trails on yeah. the trail just kind of keep keep running and doing your right. thing where would you go it's not like okay get off the trail all right how do i do that go to the festival <laughs> area all right so what are you gonna do so smart move speed up get out of there good job tom and, uh, you know, he speaks yeah. to the number of spectators. Very, very cool. And he said the medical tent was packed with a variety of heat exhaustion and ankle injuries. If you've got that many loose rocks and that, uh, you know, yeah. some kind of technical running par for the course, right? But uh, he is a borderline Neanderthal, or if you want to be scientific, Neanderthal. So uh, he set his watch to beep every 15 minutes just to remind him to take a <laughs> drink of water out of his bottle. Yeah. Very cool. And to take yeah. his hydration tabs. 
before the race. Very, very smart and good advice. Yeah, that's you kind of you kind of roll with that same technique too. He was like, you have you've got the watch alerts kind of yeah. reminding you, just reminding you to hey, you know, before you cramp up, do the stuff that you need to do. That's right. But, uh, you know, in summary, it's easy to sleep on Palmerton, so says Tom. It's a little out of the way, and it's no beast. They don't have one, so, you know, you weigh the thought of going to a trifecta weekend or not. Maybe they're missing out not having a beast. But look at it this way. If you are doing tough races in the fall, doing a tough race in the summer, such as Palmerton, yeah. yep. keep you ready. So yeah, right. right on. Yep. So it's a great way to get in some mountain training and, you know, it's a cool venue. And if you're on the East coast, like it's you like mentioned, it. especially in the Northeast, this is, this is the place to go. That's right. I mean, and it, and it really does kind of feel like a mini beast or a micro Killington. So it's like not a bad precursor to September um, in Vermont. Right on. So, uh, you know, in his appendix here, he mentions uh, a the Frank Frazetta Museum being located just 30 minutes northeast of Allentown. Some really cool stats. You know, Leg he, yep, legendary artist who defined science fiction, horror and fantasy genres from the 1970s, including heavy metal. High times, and he Damn. shaped uh, the vision of the Conan the Barbarian character. <laughs> cool. Very, very cool. Check that out in the unabridged uh, version of the sit rep. Uh, he also mentions, um, let me just pull this up on screen real fast, uh, an interview with uh, an OCR King subscriber, David Best. David, thank you for subscribing, my friend. He's a monster, right. too. He's run over 74 Spartan races, this man. And uh, what Tom says, you know, many things strike him about David. It was good to talk to him, but he's incredibly fit for 60. Man does not look 60 years no, old. Right Hats on. off to you, sir. Right. So, uh, you know, he talks about some of his high standards. And, uh, you know, he's kind of like us, not super um into the time he's focusing on obstacles yeah that's... And, and you know keeping his training you know at a high standard so that he could run some clean races and basically it's like him against him you know what i'm saying which yep. is kind of like us he's out there to run the perfect race he uses i don't know if you would call this boa or boa but uh you know tom says it's very similar to c4 I hope he's talking about the supplement and not the explosive. <laughs> Either way, that would be totally cool. Uh, David carries this in his OCR kit. And speaking right. of his kit, he's got his yep. gloves and he's got, it looks like a microfiber towel. Maybe a central Florida there. guy. So he, he's, he's a, he's a heavy traveler to, to uh, raise venues as well. So a, a guy who knows, who knows how to uh, get on a plane with his and, gear. And, and, uh, right. And get it done. You'll probably see him in get central home. Florida in late December. If you yeah. do definitely say hello to David. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, his motto is, or his mantra is find a path that works for you. Great sure. advice. Okay. So say hello to him out there on the course. Definitely say hello to Tom, pay respects, shake his hand, salute. And if it's thundering lightning, get the hell out of his way because he's <laughs> right. going to be on the move, running you down. Tom, thank you again for this fantastic sit rep. Uh, definitely check him out on Instagram, the unabridged version of this on our blog. If you haven't done okay. so already, please like and subscribe. We hope to see you guys out there on the course. But until that time, remember, as always, train hard. Have fun.